Okay, in this tutorial we're going to look at um, literal and simultaneous equations um, with some examples. So, uh, what we've got here is our first example, which is a literal equation, which is, the question is, solve mx plus ny equals kx minus z for x. Okay, so our first step okay, is always to get our x's on the same side. So we're going to bring this across, okay, and say that we've got mx minus kx plus ny equals negative z. Okay, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this ny term over the other side. So and say we've got mx minus kx equals negative z take ny. Okay, I'm going to take x out as a common factor. Okay, x outside of m minus k equals negative z minus ny. Okay, and now we're going to divide by our m minus k. So we're left with x equals negative z take ny over m minus k. Now I'll just neaten this up a little bit by going x outside of negative z plus ny over m minus k and what that's going to allow me to do is I'll be able to switch these around that will switch the sign if you like and take a negative out here as well okay and ditch those negatives so they'll be gone so we'll say x equals z plus ny over m sorry can't just do that sorry to get my negative on the bottom, okay, I really need to take a negative out, but that's going to make it k minus m. So we've got to change this sign to. So it'll be k minus m on the bottom line. Okay, just needs it up a little bit with some of our negatives on the top line. Okay, uh, our next one, our second worked example, is solve the following equations for x and y. So this time we've got simultaneous equations, we're going to solve them for x and y. But it's still a literal equation because we've got no uh, numbers in there. Okay, this one's looking pretty nice to rearrange for x, okay, and to sub back in. So what we're going to do is we're going to say this is equation 1 and 2, so I'm going to rearrange 2, okay, and make x equal 2d minus ny, okay, and I'm going to sub 2 into 1. Okay, so I'm going to replace my x here with all of this. So now we're going to say we've got m outside of 2d take ny minus y equals d. Okay, so now what I can do is I can just rearrange this for y now. Okay, and then that's going to allow me, because I've only got y in here now. Okay, that's going to allow me then to have my value for y, which I'll sub back in here. Okay, so there's a little bit of work to do here though. So I'm going to need to make this 2MD minus MNY minus Y equals D. Okay, I'm bringing all this across this side. Okay, and so I've got negative MNY minus Y equals D minus 2MD. Now I can take Y out as a common factor here as well. So I'll have y outside of negative m n minus 1 equals d minus 2 m d. Now I can take out my d if I want to there, but it's not going to make too much difference, I don't think, at this stage. Okay, so we'll do y equals d minus 2 m d all over negative m n take 1. Okay. And then I'm going to change things around a little bit and say that we've got 2MD minus D over MN plus 1. Just to neaten it up a little bit with, uh, similar to what I did here. Okay, take, uh, switch these around. Okay, uh, change that sign, take a negative 1 out the front and take a negative 1 out the front here, cancel them out. Okay, so that's my value for Y. I need my value for X as well. So I need to put this, okay, back into this equation here. So I'm going to get x equals 
right, 2D minus N times 2MD minus D right, over MN plus 1. Okay. Now, if there was something that was going to make this a bit neater, like I only had ends in the bottom, they cancel out a couple of things, okay. but I'm really not going to make that a hell of a lot nicer. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to leave that there. So we know that this is our value for Y, okay, and this is our value for X. Okay, we'll move on to our next uh, example we're going to do. Okay, so we've got... Example three is find the value of k so the following equations will have a unique solution. Okay, so we want a unique solution for this. Okay, so what we need to do is first of all we've got two linear equations. Okay, and uh, we need uh, to look at our m values or our coefficients of x's. Okay, that's what's going to tell us whether we have a unique solution or not. Okay, so what we need to do is first of all rearrange both of these in the form of y equals mx plus c. So for this first one, we can make it 3y equals k minus kx plus 1. Okay, so y equals minus k on 3x plus 1 on 3. Okay, so this is our equation 1. For our equation 2, we need to do the same thing. Okay, so we can say we've got 3ky equals minus 4 x okay by just taking this away okay and then i can go well y is going to equal minus 4 on 3k x that's my equation 2 okay so unique solutions are going to happen when our k values are different okay but that's really hard to say so what we want to do is look at when we're not going to have a unique solution okay so we want to find when our m values are the same okay so we're going to set minus k on 3 equal to minus 4 on 3k. Right, and then now we're going to do some work rearranging. Okay, so what I'm going to do is going to multiply across here. Okay, so I'm going to get minus 3k squared on 3 equaling minus 4. Okay, so my 3's are going to cancel out and my negatives are going to cancel out. So I'm going to be left with k squared equals 4. Okay, so that's going to mean then that k equals plus or minus 2. Okay? So, when my gradients are equal, that means that I'm either going to have no solutions, so it could be like this, okay, or I could have infinitely many solutions where I've got my equations on top of each other. Okay? We don't care which way it is. We don't care if we've got infinite, infinitely many or no solutions. We want unique solutions. So we know that one of these two things are going to happen for here. Okay, so unique solutions when k is an element of all real numbers, excluding my points two, uh, negative 2 and 2. Okay, so remember that means element. So just saying that k uh, belongs in here. R is our real numbers. Okay, this one, this one means excluding. Okay, and these I can't squiggly brackets. I can't remember the proper name. But it's the ones that look like that. Okay, that means individual. values. Okay, so we're not so talking about the range from negative 2 to 2, that would be either like that or like that, whether we were including them or excluding them. These type of brackets okay, mean that we are only talking about those individual values. Okay, so our unique solution where k is an element of all real numbers, so it can be anything except negative 2 or 2, because that's when we're not going to have a unique solution. Okay, We've got one more example to have a look at. Okay. Example 4 here. Okay, so we want to solve the following system of equations. So this is a simultaneous equations uh, with three variables. 
Okay, so there's a couple of different ways we could go about this. Okay, substitution or elimination or a combination of both. Okay, so most of the time I prefer substitution uh, where rearrange, sub in, okay, rearrange, sub in again. Okay, and then backtrack. That's why I'm going to uh, go about this one again. Because we've got a couple of things here that is going to work in our favour. Okay, so this equation in the middle here is going to work quite nicely um, for either X or Z. I'm going to rearrange um, for, we might rearrange for Z actually. Okay, so we're going to say here for equation 2 is going to become Z equals 1 minus X plus 5Y. Okay, that's my equation 2. Now I'm going to put that into both 3 and 1, both these equations. Okay, so 3 is quite easy because we go, well, 2x plus 3y plus all this stuff for z, 1 plus x plus 5y. Okay, that's my equation 3. Okay, we can neaten that up a little bit because we've got 2x and x will give us 3x. Okay, we've got here our, yeah, sorry, I've mucked that up. That was supposed to be a minus x here. Okay, so that'll leave us with x. Okay, 3y and 5y is 8y. Okay, plus 1. Okay, it's still going to equal our negative 2. So that's our, still our equation 3. Now I can sub this in now for equation 1. So we've got 2x minus 3y plus 2 times our z, which was our 1 minus x plus 5y. Okay, now I'm going to expand out this. So we have 2x minus 3y plus 2, oh sorry, that was still equal to negative 5. Plus 2, take 2x plus 10y, that equals minus 5. Okay, collect like terms again. Okay, well, coincidentally, our x is going to completely cancel out here. So we've got minus 2x and 2x are gone. So we've got minus 3y plus 2, okay, plus 10y equals minus 5. Okay, so that's going to give us 7y, okay, plus 2 equals minus 5, 7y equals minus 7, okay, so y is equal to minus 1. Okay, now that was actually really quite fortunate that it happened. Most of the time they actually wouldn't happen. <laughs> You'd still end up with two equations, okay, in terms of x and y, which we then do this process again, okay, but we now know what our y value is, okay, that's this one here. Okay, we can actually sub that straight back into this equation 3 now. I'm going to find our x value. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we've got x plus 8 times y, which is negative 1. Okay, plus 1 okay, equals minus 2. So I've got x minus 8 plus 1 equals minus 2. So we've got x minus 7 equals minus 2. So x is going to equal 5. Okay. Now what we need to do is have a look at uh, what equation we have that we can use to find Z. It's going to, of course, be this rearranged number two. Okay, the reason why I like our rearranging and substitution is because you always set up these equations. Okay, so say I work through, okay, and this hadn't quite worked out the way it did, I still would have ended up with something like this, where I would have found a Y equals minus one, but somewhere beforehand, because I would have done a substitution, I would have ended up with X equals something. So it's straight up as a case of, well, I'll sub my y back into my equation for x, then I'll sub them both back in for my equation for z, which is what I'm up to now. So we've got z equals 1 minus x, which is 5, plus 5 times minus 1. So z is going to equal 1 minus 5, okay, take another 5, okay, so z is going to equal minus 9. So we have our three solutions of x equals 5, y equals minus 1, and z equals minus 9. Okay, and so look, if you're reasonably confident with solving simultaneous equations, the literal equations won't make it too much different, okay? You're just going to end up working with more of our algebraic terms and those unknowns. So look, hopefully uh, those few examples that we've done will help you get through the questions you need to do.